love yarn. Do you guys love yarn? Because I, I really love yarn. I really love yarn. <laughs> Welcome to episode 45 of the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa, and I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York. You can find me on Instagram at Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio, and on Ravelry, my username is LisaJack78. So welcome if you are new, welcome back if you are returning. I have so much to catch you guys up on. It has been two weeks since I last recorded an episode for you all. So lots of knitting has happened in the last two weeks. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to just sit down and go through it all with you. So I hope that you've all been well. Uh, let's see, we have had a blizzard here on Long Island since I last checked in with you guys. Um, although some of you might know that, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you know that because I'm sure a lot of you guys on the East Coast of the United States experienced the tremendous amount of snow. I think, I think we got about 20 inches on Long Island where I am, depending on what part of the island you're at. I think Boston probably got it worse than, than most people. Um, so that was really really exciting because it happened over a weekend and so it was it was just the the perfect excuse to just to just sit down and tuck in with a whole bunch of whips um so before we get into all the knitting i wanted to talk just really briefly about all of these weekend whips videos that i have started putting out so um a lot of you guys know that we are in the process of packing up and moving we are currently with my parents and they are selling the house and moving down to South Carolina. So we are moving everything into storage and we are we are getting ready to look for a place to land. Um, so in the meantime, I have been, it's been a little bit crazy here to try to film. I started a new position at my job, so my schedule has gotten much crazier, but I I am so happy. I am I'm finally doing everything that I want to do and life is just really really good, albeit pretty hectic at the moment. So, um yeah, these whips videos though that I have been doing um at the very end of 2021, I filmed a video of all of the whips that I had lingering like this whole long list, I think there were 13, 12 or 13 projects that I had started sometime either before 2021 or during 2021, and they are just in various stages of incomplete. And so I have been taking my weekends and filming vlog style the process of me working through this really long list of whips. Um, and so these are not like current, like new cast on projects. These are, are things that have just been, been weighing on me in their incomplete status. They have not yet reached like UFO point where they've just been forgotten about for a long period of time. These are all things that I plan to finish. Um, but they've just been in work in progress state for a long time. And so my big goal, one of my big goals, I have not, I have not filmed a 2022 knitting plans video. Um, I'm kind of waiting to make 2022 plans until I work my way through a lot of these incomplete projects and feel like we're settled somewhere. But my big project right now is to just work my way as best as I can through this long list of whips. So um, I know that those of you who have been watching the videos seem to really enjoy that format. Um, they're really low key. I just kind of film me working on them and I, I pop in here and there and talk about the progress that I'm making or what I, what I hope to accomplish with those projects over the course of that particular video, which is like over 
two or three days over the weekend. I have a work from home day on Mondays, so sometimes the video kind of lingers into, I'll, I'll maybe start it Friday night and it'll kind of go through the weekend and I might, I might take that into Monday a little bit since I'm still at home on Mondays. So I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit what those videos are if you've not checked them out yet. And basically it's, it's like a grab your whips and sit down and work on a project that you've had on the needles for too long, right along with me. So I'm glad to know that a lot of you are enjoying those videos. And if you haven't checked them out yet, you know, grab a project and come sit down and work your way through it with me. So let's, let's work on uh, knocking some of those off the list early in the year. So yeah, I'm really trying to make some headway on a lot of those projects because as always, there are just, there are projects that I am like shiny new things that I am interested in casting on, but I am resisting right now and I am, I am being good and I am working through the things that I really want to and need to finish. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm wearing today. So this is one of my first sweaters that I have ever knit. And this was actually a test knit that I did for Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fiber Co. This is her Easley sweater and it's a really beautiful design. I wear this all the time. This is one of those sweaters that I grab most, most often. I knit it in a light fingering weight yarn. Um, it was a Chincoteague Island. Um, they, there's a nice little yarn shop in on that island in Virginia, and they have like some yarns that they dye themselves. And so this was one of those colors. I think, I think the color was called Tugboat or something and it's just it's just beautiful it's like a tonal brown and then it is this um beautiful um cable pattern on the sweater and this boat neck design so um yeah this is this is one of my favorites it's one that i grab all the time and that's what i'm wearing today so um, if you are interested in this pattern, it's, Annie's had this out for a few years. I think I, I knit it three or four, maybe four years ago now, maybe three. I'm not really sure. I'll, everything just blends together since we went into pandemic land, you know, in 2020. And who knows what time it is anymore. I, I, I yeah, I don't know. It's, it's been a few years since I knit this and that's that's as proud as much of that detail as I can remember so yeah all the in, uh, information for this pattern is and everything that I talk about today also will be linked um, in the description box below this video I will usually have a link directly to my project page on Ravelry um, but I try to also have some basic information in case you guys don't use Ravelry as well so that you can find the design and yeah. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I have a finished object and it attacked me this week. So in this next segment, for my finished object segment today, I am... Are you guys familiar with the Knit, Knit More Girls podcast? It's an audio podcast and they have been around forever. And Jasmine and Gigi, they, um, and now Genevieve too, their daughter, they sometimes purloin segments from other podcasts. And so that's what I'm about to do here today because, um, yeah, my knitting attacked me. So they have this segment called When Knitting Attacks and... I felt very attacked by my knitting this week. So yeah, when knitting attacks, y'all. Okay, so if any of you have been watching my Weekend Whips videos, you will know that I have been focused on getting these Bernie mittens done for my husband and I am happy to say, as you can see right now, that they are, there's a pair of mittens now. 
we have two. We have two Bernie mittens, y'all. Look at these beautiful mittens. I am so happy. My husband keeps making fun of the way I say mittens. I think he just thinks I should say mittens, mittens, but I don't know. That's a very mittens. I guess it's very Long Island to say mittens, right? But mittens, I don't know. He just keeps making fun of me for mittens. I'm just gonna keep saying mittens. Mittens, mittens, mittens. So anyway, <laughs> guys, I finally finished these Bernie mittens. I have been talking about knitting these for my husband since inauguration, since the Bernie mitten memes and all that stuff blew up more than a year ago now. Not too much more than a year ago, just a little bit more than a year ago. Um, yes, so these mittens, attacked me this week oh my goodness let me tell you what happened it was so frustrating <laughs> oh my goodness so two two weekend so there's there's another weekend whips video that will have just come out by the time this podcast is released so the one before that i had finished all of the color work like i had had the mitten done like I had the back of it done and I had the front of it done and all that I had left to do by the end of that video was the inner lining and the cuff so this past weekend I picked it up thinking okay like it was like Friday I had just gotten home from work I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna get a head start on these burning mittens and knock this off the list tonight because all I had left to do was the inner lining and a cuff totally doable I, when I went to start knitting the inner lining, I realized based on <laughs> what needle size I was supposed to use that I had knit the entire palm and thumb of the mitten on the wrong size needles the whole thing basically all the knitting which was all this that i had done in that previous video that you guys have all seen by now i had to rip it all out because it wasn't just like off by one needle size i was off by three needle sizes i actually and i was wondering i was like why does this one look kind of wonky as I like seamed it all together compared to the left one that I had finished. And this one, let me tell you, so knitworthy, my husband is so knitworthy and he was just like going on and on about the fit of this mitten and how well it fit. And it was the best fitting item that I had ever knit for him. And he was so happy with it. He couldn't wait to have the second one. And so when I realized, when I realized that not only had I used the wrong needle size for the inside of this mitten, but that I was off by three needle sizes, like I was supposed to knit this on a US three and I had accidentally used my US six. That, that's a pretty big difference. I was wondering why my gauge and everything seemed a little bit bigger, like the color work design seemed just a little bit bigger compared to this one and then i i figured out why once i realized what needle size i had accidentally used so i was like all right maybe i don't have to knit to rip this out and so i called hubby over and i had him put it on and i said before i continue with this mitten oh i just said mitten i did it before I continue, I need to know, are you happy with the way this is fitting now? So there was no inner lining. So like we knew that the inner lining would take up a bit more room. Um, can you try this on with this mitten, like two of them together? Let me know. Are you going to be happy with this? Can I continue? Or I said, because if I'm going to rip it out, it needs to be now before I before I go on and do any any more of it and so he put it on and 
he held it up to this one and the thumb was gonna be like this much longer and it was it was all kind of wonky and I he felt he felt so bad but I, I want him to be happy I want him you know I don't want to I don't want to finish something just to get it done and off my plate I want him to be like these are the best mittens ever and wear them all the time because these are some seriously warm mittens and he should basically have these for a lifetime because you know he's got a nice pair of warm gloves that he'll wear when he's actually out like shoveling and in the snow so you know so he's not gonna be like Th these are just gonna last these are these are just like keep the hands warm at the bus stop when you're sitting out there waiting in the freezing cold and when you have to walk and I mean he, he probably could play in the snow with these but you know he's just because we have a seven-year-old son who plays in the snow so it's not like we just I mean not that there's anything wrong with you know adults in their 40s playing in the snow there is nothing wrong with that but we generally would prefer prefer to be on the inside of the house when there is a lot of snow where our son prefers to be outside playing in it so we get dragged out there anyway so I wanted him to be ridiculously happy with these as happy as he was when he opened this one um for Christmas so I guess he didn't open it I just handed it to him I said here's your Christmas present it's only halfway done because I do that to him all the time um yeah so I could tell that he wasn't gonna be as happy with the right mitten as with the left one so I I filmed this too, so if you guys have not yet watched the most recent <laughs> Weekend Whips video, you, you can uh, bear witness to my frustration with myself. I, it, it is so rare that I make a knitting mistake of that magnitude. I, I was so mad at myself. I was so so incredibly mad at myself and let me tell you because I had already there were like ends to weave in before you seam it and it was not easy to rip this all out because I had woven in my ends so well I should also mention that the yarn that I used the beautiful yarn that I used for these is Green Mountain Spinneries Mountain Mohair so do you hear that word mohair in there? Anybody who has ever tried to rip back a project that uses a yarn that includes mohair will understand then the level of frustration and angst and just utter err that I felt ripping this thing apart. I was like, it's not just acrylic like everybody else used acrylic to knit their Bernie mittens. No, I had to use fancy mountain mohair. So, but I, it, it is so sticky. This yarn would be the perfect yarn for any sticking project. It's not gonna go anywhere. So if you're ever gonna go steak something, grab some Green Mountain Spinnery Mountain Mohair. It will never come apart, ever, ever. You'll, you're, you're safe for a steaking project with this yarn. So, oh my gosh, you guys. Can I tell you how happy I was to finally finish this mitten after all of that? I, I sat there Friday after work. I sat there, I got the whole palm ripped out and re-knit before I went to bed on Friday. I was just like at that point I was I was so I was so mad. <laughs> I was so frustrated with myself that this project had gone from I really want to get this thing done so that my husband can have the mittens to this mitten really needs to get finished because I am so stinking mad at it and I, I just don't want to look at it anymore because I've already re-knit, I've already knit this and now I'm knitting it again and 
it it just needs to be done so <laughs> so there was there was a level of <sighs> I, I will tell you though that once I got knitting again like I was I was really angry <laughs> I was really frustrated when I was knitting I mean ripping it out but then as soon as I got it back on the needles and I saw it starting to grow back I calmed down so because it's an enjoyable knit it's it's a challenging pattern because there's a lot going on but it's it's not difficult um oh the pattern i should say is um is a pay for pattern and i wanted to do a pay for pattern because i needed um a super large size mitten for my husband's very large hands and the free patterns that i was looking at um they were all kind of like one size for like adult medium woman I, like i that wasn't gonna work for him plus i needed it spelled out for me like how to knit um the inner lining and to do all that and this pattern included all of those things um the pattern is bernie mitten replica and it's by danielle chauvet i think is her name and it was not test knit there are mistakes i did find some mistakes um in this part of the pattern a little bit in the color work like some of the counts were off um but it, it was only a few rows and like I, I think the left one was fine so it was just like it was just the right one and it was so there were a few like minor mistakes but i you know it was worth it to me to pay for this pattern and i just love these my husband loves these they fit really well and most importantly they're done these are done and it's great so now um i have to get some a proper finished object photos of you know everybody that knit the bernie mittens they staged it with you know sitting in the chair like bernie did and everything so i'm gonna have to uh round up my husband and get him to model for some photos for me but that is the last step of these being totally done so hopefully i'll be able to get him um to pose for some photos before i finish editing this video for this podcast and get it up and yeah so I, I talked for a long time about those mittens, but that was because they really, they attacked me. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a breath. I love these. They're done. And I have so many whips. So many whips. I have so many things to share with you guys. You guys, this is going to be a long episode because I didn't record last week because I had a meeting at work. I had to go in. Wednesday's my, my off day, except the first Wednesday of every month, there's a meeting that I have to go to. And so it's just the timing of it. And it's my commute is like 45 minutes. So I just, I couldn't find the time last week to sit down and record a podcast. So I have a lot. So yeah, go, go refill your drink, get a refill. Um, because because I have a lot of whips, a lot of whips to share. So yeah, let's let's head on into whips. Okay. So I have now added a whip to my list. Do you guys remember how at the last podcast episode? guys remember how I said I was done with test knits and how I wasn't doing anymore okay I have a really really solid reason for agreeing to this test knit so I have one new cast on it's gonna be done soon but you guys um my friend my knitting friend Nola is somebody that I met through my husband because she is a classical singer and she is a knitter with a capital K and a spinner with a capital S 
And now she is adding pattern designer to her resume. Um, she actually approached me almost a year ago, maybe la last spring, and said that she was starting to get interested in writing patterns and would love to have me test knit for her. And so, of course, right after I announced that I am no longer doing test knits, she comes out with her first set of designs and I couldn't renege on my promise to her. Um, so Nola has these beautiful, this beautiful trio of designs that will be coming out. I don't know the exact date. I think very early March because my test note is due the 25th of February. So, you know, it's a really, really quick one. She's got a beautiful hat, fingerless mitts and cowl set coming out. And so um, testers only have to commit to one of the three. So I'm actually gonna knit both the hat and the mitts because I had enough of my kerfluffle. Do you guys remember I used this kerfluffle yarn from Wonderland Yarns. I, I tested knit a sweater for Annie using this yarn. And I'm a brand ambassador for Wonderland Yarns. And so I, um, I figured this would be, I had two skeins of this unopened, left over, and it's a DK weight yarn. This is the Alice DK in the colorway Kerfluffle. And it was DK weight yarn that Nolo used in her test knits. And so I am going to, in insert some pictures of her beautiful designs that will be coming out in a few weeks. Um, they're, they're gorgeous. I think she was inspired by a building in New York City, um, Cloister, Cloisters building. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but this is the Cloisters hat, mitts, and the Cloisters cowl pattern. And so, um, I, I cast this on just the other night. It is so fun. Um, there, There is a really, I am so impressed with her. For a first pattern, oh my goodness, you guys, like the chart is, it's beautifully done. These cable designs, you can't see it here in mine because I'm just barely started. Um, so it's really hard like you can't tell what this is going to look like but that's my progress so far so i'm not i'm not even halfway through yet but this um it's it's just gorgeous this design and so i'm really happy to help her out with this i for the test i only have to complete one so i started with the hat so you know when i am done with the hat i do plan to knit the mitts too but at least i don't the mitts i don't have to get done by her deadline but I'm gonna try to. Um, and the cowl is beautiful too. I would love to knit the cowl as well. I don't have enough of this kerfluffle yarn to make it a set of three. So I might either have to get some more if I want it to be like a full on matching set or what I might do if I decide to also knit the cowl at some point is, I mean, this is a beautiful yarn with so many um, choices of colors that would coordinate really well with it. I, I think I could pick pretty much any color um, of the speckles and that would coordinate really well. So yeah, so I'm the cowl is, is a pretty significant cowl, almost like a wrap. It's, it's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I will, I will stick some pictures in. And yeah, so but I, I picked a small one. I said, all right, I can commit to doing like hat and mitts for you. And I have been talking actually recently about wanting to have a pair of fingerless mitts for myself anyway. And I had already planned on, you know, I was thinking with this leftover kerfuffle yarn, I said, well, this is beautiful. This would make like a really nice hat and things, you know, so I already kind of had it in my head that I would turn this into a hat and mitten set or something. So I am now doing just that. So that is the first project I'm sharing with you today. And I, I swear I am not going to commit to any more test knits after this one, but this, it was too good a pattern. And she's a colleague of my husband's and she had already, um, asked me, you know, almost a year ago. So 
you know, I, I had to, I had to do it. And it's, it's a quick project. So, you know, I was also, it was, it was really good. Cause I was feeling that itch. Like I have been so good about just working on my whips that I was feeling that like, I really want to cast on something new feeling. Uh, so, so this kind of satisfied that, that urge for me. And yeah, let's get into some other whips now. All right, guys, so the next thing on my I really want to finish by a specific date thing on my whips, my lingering whips list is a pair of two at a time socks. And so I, um, I've had this book, Two at a Time Socks. It's by Melissa Morgan Oaks. I've had this book for a number of years. And I, I never knit two at a time socks. And uh, last year I did a Valentine's Day episode and I had cast on with the sock blank because I've also never knit from a sock blank. Um, but this is one of the sock blanks where you make two at a time and they look exactly the same. And so um, I had barely cast on a year ago and like I didn't even have the cuff done. I'm gonna show you the pattern that I decided to knit. Oh, where is it? If I can find it, go to a type patterns here. They're really cute. All right, so this pattern is called Be Mine, and they are these really cute pair of heart cable socks. So that is the pattern that I chose. And a year ago, I had cast on and made it like half an inch. And then I never picked this project up again. So I have this goal now. I don't know if I'm going to meet the goal, but I had it in my head that I wanted to get these socks. These would be like my Valentine's socks. And I would have these done by Valentine's Day. So today is now the 9th of February. Uh, don't know that I'm going to make it by Valentine's Day, but this is like for the upcoming weekend whips video. This is going to be my main focus, but I am making some really good progress. All right. Now I know that this is not like the ideal yarn to use for like a cable pattern, but I still thought it would be cute. And you can totally see, you can totally see the little heart cables. And I mean, they're going to be on my feet. I'm not going to be like walking around showing my legs to anybody, you know? So if I know that they're there, then I know that they're there and the light is totally changing, but you know, so you can, you can kind of see those hearts there. So yeah, um, I, I was having a time with these though. And I know all of you are telling me use the chow goo needles with the red cable because this cable is kind of like bendy and twisty and everything for a while, like until, until I put a couple inches on this sock, everything was getting pretty tangled. And yeah, but now we're, we're better now. I, I was very frustrated getting these started, but now we're good and I'm enjoying working on them. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'll have these done by Valentine's Day. If they don't get done by Valentine's Day, I'm going to have these be the socks that I knit on for the month of February. I might give myself a couple weeks and just these are my February socks. I want to have these done before March for sure. So that is the next whip that I have to share with you guys. Um, I have another pair of socks that I was working on. So actually... I'm wearing mine today, but, uh, all right, let me get these out. We're going to go into Knitworthy super quick because I already just got these out. All right, here's Knitworthy. Okay, so I have already shown you all this pair of socks. I'm actually, I'm wearing them right now, but... I usually make Owen a matching pair to mine if they are in colors that he enjoys. 
And so I have almost one sock done. I need to, I need to figure out if I'm ready to do the toe on his socks or if I need to knit just like a little bit longer. So I need to either grab his foot or a pair of his socks. I don't bother like taking his foot measurements down because his feet are just growing constantly. So they're just gonna be changing. Um, yeah, so I just, I need to figure out if I am ready to do the toe on these. But I've almost got one sock done for Owen. And this, again, is using the Knitterly Things. This was her October 2021 sock club. This color is Burning Leaves, and it came with this little mini that I am using for the heels and the toes. So, yeah, I think I have enough yarn to finish up another sock for Owen. So, and then I love it because I can get a pair of socks for me and another pair of socks for Owen. And then by that point, I really hardly have any yarn left. So I feel like I've used like everything. So that always feels really good. So I've not knit Owen any socks yet in 2022. So this will be his first pair. And it's also my first pair for 2022. So I'm not gonna hold my foot up, but just trust that I am wearing mine right now. I love these colors so much. So this is uh, Julia over at Knitterly Thangs, and it's her sock club that I have been subscribed to for years and years and years and years. And I said I wasn't gonna subscribe this year because I have so much of her sock yarn and I, I, I just couldn't unsubscribe. I, I love her yarn that much. Her colors are just great and she's always coming up with new ideas and I just I just love them. So yeah, so that is Knitworthy. Let's slide back into whips now because I still have like so two more two more projects to share. Or three, no two. I think two more to share. So all right, back to whips we go. I tell you guys how in love with the junction sweater I am I am loving this so much so this is my junction sweater and this is how much I have done so far I have put a few more inches on the body so I still have a ways to go this is the project I want to be knitting on all the time but this one has not been lingering for nearly as long as the other ones. So yeah, this, this one is my current mindless knit because the body pattern is, it's so simple. It's like three rows of like plain single color knitting and then this beautiful little flea stitch in there. And so this is, I love it. I don't have to look at a pattern now. This is just, it, it's almost like mindless stockinette, except every fourth row you've got one little row of color work. It's brilliant. I love this so ridiculously much. So this is Junction by Andrea Mowry, and I chose this pattern because I with my drop spindle spun up. Oh, and I forgot to bring the other, I have more hand spun and more, yeah, down, down in the basement where I usually do my knitting. Um, so um, this is what I have left on my sweater right now, but this is hand spun from fiber that was deep, deep fiber stash from, um, so Wonderland Yarns has Frabjous fibers and so they're, you know, all the same company. And so I spun this, I started it like last spring and I finished it and I love this so much. This this is 100% Polworth and the colorway was called Iris. And so it's just, it's beautiful. And so I wanted to find, I had, you know, a whole bunch of this hand spun and my spinning is very thick and thin still. And it's it's kind of hard to tell in what I have left over here. But I mean, you guys can kind of tell. There's thick spots, there's thin spots. We're not super consistent yet. I'm still pretty new spinner. 
um, a few years into spinning, but I'm, I do it so sporadically that, you know, I have not, I just, I don't spin to the extent that I knit. So, you know, we're, we're still in beginner territory there, but I wanted to find a pattern, like a way to use the hand spun because I love the hand spun that I got so much. And I wanted to feature it in actually a sweater, not just like an accessory. And so I chose this pattern. I tell you guys this every week, but in case you're new here and don't know, I chose this pattern to use my hand spun, but I figured that between the brioche stitch here and the flea stitch here, it's, it's a great way that it, it like it, my hand spun is heavily featured, but it's not highlighting the like the, all the inconsistencies in it. And so it's, it's just wonderful. Um, I should show you a inside view. Here is the, this is the inside view of my sweater. So, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Um, and so I paired it with, and I'm a, I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why I'm concerned in a second, but I paired it with this Harrisville yarn, and this was Mill Ends. I visited over the summer the Harrisville Designs, and in their retail shop, they have like a section of Mill Ends. So there's, there's no labels on it. It's like got approximate yardage, which I failed to write down. Um, but yeah, it's got, um, I wanna see if I can find a spot. It's got like these little bits there you go. It's got these little bits of green in there. So it pairs just beautifully with my hand spun. And let's see if I can, I don't know. I think, I feel like this flea stitch pattern, when the light it hits it right, it really brings out the, the little bit of green in the Harris fill, but the light's not really hitting it right at the moment. So yeah, I might, maybe I'll insert a closer up picture of of that but so this is all that I have left I have no idea I mean I could weigh it and I could I could figure out um, I could figure out how many grams I have or how many ounces but I don't know how many yards I have so I have used I had two of these and now I'm into the second one and I just don't know if I'm gonna have enough for the entire sweater, which is making me really sad because of how much I love this sweater. Uh, I just don't know. Um, I have no idea what my yardage is. So there might be some serious yarn chicken playing. Um, I think my plan is I don't really have a plan, but I'm gonna make sure that I get the body to a length that I'm comfortable with. And then I might move on to the sleeves. I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I really don't wanna have short sleeves. I really want it to be like long sleeve version. But I bought this in June and it was mill ends and I don't know that they even have it anymore. And like there's no name on it or anything. So I don't know if I could even like call over there and be like, do you have any more of this random yarn that I bought when I visited your shop? I just, I don't know. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned, but let me tell you, when I had to switch to the second, to the second ball of yarn, I did split splicing for the first split, spit. Spit, not split. Spit splicing. I did spit splicing for the first time and it worked like magic. It worked like magic. So do you guys know what spit splicing is? I didn't until, I mean, I've known about it for maybe a year or so now, but I had never done it. And then with this, because there's no super wash in this or anything, this is completely rustic. So this will only work with like wool. It won't work with superwash. I don't know. I don't think it'll work with superwash, but um, 
you need it to be like a good, like sticking wool is ideal. Um, and so when I had to connect them together, what I did was I took the end and I separated the plies out a little bit, just like when you're, when you're spinning fiber and you have to like join it together. So I, I undid like the end of the ply on the yarn that was the end of what I knit in my sweater and then on the new skein and I undid the plies a little bit and then I kind of wet them with Miss Bit a little bit and then the friction I laid them on top of one another and then I did this and they felted together and it was perfect and it was not going to come apart there was it, it was brilliant it was it was such an exciting moment um, of just two less ends to have to weave in. It, it was like magic. Spit splicing, it was magic. I can't wait to do it again someday. It was so much fun. It was ridiculous. And it, I mean, you couldn't even tell where the one skein ended and where the new one began. It was, it was, it was, it was magic. And it was amazing. Spit splicing is everything. Tell me in the comments below, have you guys done spit splicing before? It's, it's amazing. So yeah, so that is my junction sweater. That is the status of that. I have one more sweater that I returned to that has been lingering for close to a year. Actually, yeah, like a year. So yeah, let me get this one out. All right. My final whip has made some exciting progress. So this is um, my artist's journey sweater. And this is a testament that I never finished for Annie Lupton. Um, yeah, this is like, I couldn't get it done. It was, it was such a huge commitment and it is so gorgeous. So what I did, is I finally finished, I think when I stopped and abandoned it, I was, I was halfway through the color work just on the back side of, of the body. And so I finished the color work. I did the little, there's like twisted, twisted stitches. Um, so I did all the shoulder shaping. I did the, I did the neckline shaping of the back, you know, so I bound off the stitches. That's where I left off was just like splitting for the sides of the back and then doing the shoulder shaping. And so I had to do it again on this side. And so um, over the weekend, and I, I don't even, I don't know if I even put this in my video or not. Um, over the weekend, I finished the back sides of the garment at the shoulders. And then last night I seamed them together. Look at that beautiful seam. So it was mattress stitch. So now the shoulders are connected. I tried it on yesterday. After I did that, it fits beautifully. This is gorgeous. I am really excited about this one too, but it is going to take me a while to finish this one. Um, I, it just needs a neckband and sleeves, but the sleeves are, are, you know, the same full on color work. And then you guys see there's all these twisted, twisted stitches in the, in between the color work sections. There is a lot to do, but I'm going to flip this inside out because I want to show you what I also did last night. Uh, so there were so many ends. And so I still have all of these on the side here to weave in. What I love though about knitting color work designs like this is how easy it is to weave in the ends, just tucking them under all the floats. So what I did last night was after I seamed the shoulders together, I went and I, I wove in all the ends around the neckline and at both both of the arms i did i did all the ends like so you can see on this side completely has no ends left so all of the ends that were sticking out all around the arm hole i wove those all in 
And so I, you can see, I just, I just kind of tuck them in under all the floats and then I trim them. So I did all of that. And the reason I wanted to go ahead and do that now is because the next thing I have to do is pick up stitches. And there were just so many crazy ends that I, I just, I knew I wasn't going to want to deal with any of that when I was, I hate picking up stitches. It is one of my least favorite things to do. Um, I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm getting much better at it, but you know, it, it's one of my least favorite things is picking up the stitches to then get going on the next part. So I wove in all those ends so that I wouldn't have a bunch of ends like driving me nuts when I had to do that. So yeah, so I, it needs a neckband and then it needs sleeves, but um, this is beautiful. I love the colors that I picked. This is all um, Wonderland's yarn. I actually started this project and purchased this yarn myself. So I am a brand ambassador for Wonderland yarn. So they do send me some yarn to work with, but this sweater dates to like a month or two before I became a brand ambassador with them. So everything for this sweater I purchased myself. So um, this is, it's really similar. I actually have these side by side right now. So this is the Kerfluffle and this one is called Frippery. So they're really very similar. This one has more of a whitish base color underneath the jewel tones and then this one has more of a gray a grayish bluish as a base color um and then you guys can see um like how they knit up side by side if i get to like the ribbing down here so there's the this is the kerfluffle here and this one is frippery so you can see that the one is more of a darker a darker gray but Oh, those jewel tones though, they get me. They get me so good. So this is what the frippery looks like in the skein. I still have one full skein of this. And then I still have um, this. I think I had three of these to begin with. So I've got, I'm probably halfway through what I had, like one and a half I've used, one and a half to go. So yeah, if you wanna see what it looks like first in the skein, and then I can also open it up. I know a lot of you guys like to see what it looks like unraveled and things. So yeah, so this is frippery, like, so there's some like really nice teal splotches, some larger teal splotches in there, and then some smaller jewel tone speckles. So that's what it looks like in the skein. And then for all of the color work, I haven't talked about this one in a while because I haven't worked on it in a while. Um, so for all of the color work, what I did was I bought two sets of their uh, eight skein mini sets. So I think I'm using six of the colors. And this was... Um, Rhyme and Reason, set number 82. And so it had all of these jewel tone colors in there. And so I picked, I picked six of the eight colors. And so I needed, I needed more than one set because the yardage for the mini skeins was not enough for what I needed for the pattern because there's so much color work in the pattern. So I picked up two sets of the same colorway. And that's what I used for all of the color work, the bands of color work in this. So, uh, I would love to get this one done soon. I just, this has been such a slow knit, but it is really enjoyable to work on when I'm actually working on it. So I think without the pressure of a deadline now, I might be, I might be motivated to like work on a sleeve and make some more progress. And then I think after I have one sleeve done, I'll be like only a sleeve away, you know? And so then the momentum might pick up a little bit. But yeah, this is this is one of those whips that has just been lingering for about a year. And it's it's gorgeous. I would love to actually just be able to, to put this on and wear it. I know I'm gonna love it when it's done. So 
yeah, I'm glad. Like it felt really good to get the shoulders seamed together and actually be able to try this on. So, and then once I had it on, I, I got really excited for, for wanting to get it done. So, all right, that is all of the knitting content that I have to share with you guys for today. I have some acquisitions, so I'm gonna head on into acquisitions next. All right, guys, so I have more acquisitions than I planned to have, but I have a very good reason for that, which I will get into when I'm ready to show that yarn. All right, so first, it is that early time of the month again when my Knitterly Things Sock Yarn Subscription Club comes in the mail. And so I wanted to show you the yarns that I got this month. I am subscribed to both of Julia's Sock Yarn Club. So she has a regular Vesper Yarn Sock Club and that one for January 2022 is uh, called Comfy Cozy, and look at these beautiful colors. They're so pretty. So this has like a peach, blue, green, pink, like all of these beautiful kind of, kind of jewel tone in like saturation, which is really cool. And then this really interesting, um, I'm trying to find a good place, there we go, the variegated brown, which has almost a little black in it too. So it's like a dark chocolate with like a black kind of uh, tones in there. So that is beautiful. And then the other sock yarn club that she has is called her Remix Club. And that is the one where she takes um, an old colorway that she did maybe like early in her dyeing career is she reimagines it into something new and so that she calls that the remix club and this one for January 2022 is called delightful remix you guys can already see how much I love these colors the mini especially is my most favorite shade of purple uh, that fuchsia berry kind of shade of purple is my favorite in the world. And so that's the mini. And then these beautiful colors almost kind of remind me of ice cream or something. I don't know. There's like, there's like a bright dark red and a gray, but then like a sea green, um, a yellow, a really light grayish cream color. Um, did I say sea green and pink? So like really interesting colors. So if you guys notice, like the bases, you can tell are, are different bases. And that is because she offers several different bases when you sign up for her club. And I have two different ones because I do a dyer's choice. So I just, I let Julia decide what she feels like dying on. So this one is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And then this one is 75% superwash wool with 25% nylon. So this one is a little bit, a little bit thicker than this one. So they're so nice. They're always soft and squishy. I just, I love her. I love her socks so much. And then, so, all right. I, I had to go last week, so last Wednesday, when I had to go to my meeting at work, after the meeting, I drove over to Port Jefferson. It was a little bit of a drive, but I was out and I had the afternoon free and I needed to pick up a pom-pom because for Owen's hat, this beautiful pom-pom had, um, the pom-pom was in great condition, but the elastic had had broken and so there was no way that I could see to like it, it like thinned and it it came like right off like half of the elastic came right out of the pom-pom and even though the pom-pom itself was beautiful condition I could see no way that I knew how to fix the frayed elastic 
And so I needed to buy a pom-pom. And I've actually already fixed his hat. I did that the other day. I bought two pom-poms because you guys, like Lorian, if you're watching, you're gonna wanna know this too. The Knitting Cove is closing. They are shutting their doors. They, um, they're just not getting enough business. And I think it was a mix of, they kept having to move their location for various reasons. And then of course the pandemic and um, it's really sad. It just, it just hasn't worked out. I think, you know, Tony tried so hard to keep that store up and running and she finally just threw her hands up in the air and, um, you know, she's not selling it to somebody else. She is just, she's just letting everything go. So they are having a really big sale right now and because they're clearing out all of their inventory. Um, so they are closing at the end of March. I was not planning to buy anything except the pom-pom, but they had, they had three blue pom-poms there. So I bought two so that I would have another backup because this is Owen's favorite hat. Um, and so I bought two of the three pom-poms. If I go back and they still have the other one, I'll probably buy that one too and just have another backup. Um, but they are, if you pay in cash, all of their yarn and everything in the store is 20% off. And if you use credit card or debit card or something, it's 15% off. So, I mean, I didn't have cash. I was not planning to buy more than just a pom-pom. But once I heard that they were closing, I already had it in my head. So this, this is kind of going into my knitting plans for 2022 just a little bit. I'm not gonna, I want to cast this on. But um, so when I picked up the yarn for the last giveaway that I did for my one year podcasting giveaway that Janet got, um, I had picked up a few skeins of it for myself. And I was already thinking maybe I should pick up some more of that. And if I did these colors together, because I picked up maybe four or five skeins for myself, each in a different color, but the colors look so beautiful together. And then Andrea came out, Andrea Mowry came out with her Douglas Cardi pattern. And I just like this yarn, those colors together and this pattern I figured are gonna be such a great match. So I stocked up on some more so that I could make a Douglas Cardi. So I'm gonna dig out the yarn. Okay. So, these, these colors, are they're just gorgeous. Let me get all of them together. I have a few more downstairs from what I had bought previously. But I picked, um, did, yes, yeah, four different, no, five different colors. I have five different colors. So, this is all five of them together. Aren't those just gorgeous? So this is Less Traveled Yarn, and oh my gosh, it is, it is pure wool. Let me read the labels. I'm just trying to get like all those together. I just thought for a Douglas Cardi, these would just be absolutely beautiful. Um, all right, so the yarn is, it's called her Arcadia DK. It's 100% merino and it's USA sourced spun and dyed. So it's all uh, United States. So I don't know the breakdown of like what sheeps, what sheeps, sheep. Lisa, there's no S on sheep, plural. On what sheep breeds <laughs> are in this yarn. But, all right, so I, I only picked up one other, they only had one more of this color. So this is obsidian and I already have one. So now I have two. So I have two of these. And then I picked up um, three more of these because I'm, I'm trying to decide what color I want. So the, the cardigan, I'll insert a picture. Um, there's like the stripe colors, but then there's also the, uh, button band, neck band, 
kind of think of it as the border section, right? And so you need, I think you need more yarn for the, for the border section. So I already have one, so now I have four and of this color. And so this is called cabin wood. So this might be what I use for the border. The other color I picked up several of was this one. So it's either gonna be that one that I just showed you or this one. So I'm not really sure which, but these are the two that I would have the most of. This one is called Blushing Botanist. I did not already have this one in my, from when I had bought this previously. So I bought four um, of this color. And so the, I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna use. It'll either, it'll be one of these for the border. Might be the darker one, but I'm not sure. Um, but definitely one of these because that's the quantity that I have. So blushing botanist or cabin wood for like the trim of the sweater. And then um, I have two other colors. So I already had one skein of this and this one is called, the color is olive. And so this is a beautiful, a beautiful green. And then the last color that I have, so I have three of the green total and then I have three, and these are 50 grams each. So it's 180 yards per 50 grams. And then this one is essence of lilac. And so I had one, I think I had one. So now I have three. So, and this one is, it's beautiful. There's like, it's kind of a bit more variegated than the other ones, but very subtle, soft pastel colors. It's just beautiful. So yeah, so my plans are to turn all of this into a Douglas Cardi. I really wanna cast on, but I am trying to be so good. I think here is everything all together. So this is gonna be a Douglas Cardi. Can't you see it? Can't you just like picture this as a Douglas Cardi? I'm excited. So yeah, so that was what I picked up. I mean, I had to, they're closing their store. I always try to go in there at least a few times a year to support Tony. Um, I'll probably go back before they close at the end of March and see what they have left. Um, so by then, I don't know, maybe things will be even more on sale than they currently are. But I just, I thought that these would just make a beautiful Douglas Cardi. So I am really excited about that. Um, yeah, that, that, that's what I've got for you for this episode today. Um, yeah, I've got one more thing I need to film, uh, today as my Paradise Fibers came in the mail yesterday. So I'm gonna finish up this episode and then I'm going to unbox my Paradise Fibers. So I'm not gonna include that in this acquisitions because I think this video is long enough. <laughs> So yeah, I, I feel really, really proud of myself for my commitment to working through these whips and resisting the urge to just cast on even more things before I work through a good amount of my current projects. Because I don't know, all of the projects I'm working on, I'm really excited about. I'm going to love them when they're finished. And so it, it feels really good to be making some serious headway on all of those. And yeah, but I am, I am getting the itch to cast on new things. Oh, I also pre-ordered the Pom Pom Spring magazine. Have you guys seen the patterns in that magazine? Almost all of them I want to make. They are so me. There's like, there's mohair and there's ruffles and they're just, they're whimsical and they're light and airy. And there's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to be good and work through my stash, but I don't have a lot of mohair in my stash. So I'm definitely going to be choosing something from that magazine when it arrives. I think the digital version will come out on the, I want to say the 24th of this month of February. So in another like two weeks, I will be able to um, 
get started on something. So I might be choosing and gathering some materials for a cast on from the new Pom Pom magazine because I, I got so excited when I saw the designs. I think it's the only time I've ever pre-ordered Pom Pom. Usually I wait and I pick it up when it's already come out and I'll just order it from somewhere and but I got I got so excited by all of those patterns that I just I had to pre-order it right away. And so that it will be on its way to me and I'll be able to access the digital version when it is available in another couple of weeks and yeah, I think choosing which of those projects to cast on first is going to be a little challenging because there are so many good ones. So yeah, that is, that's, I'm still just like hugging my, my future Douglas Cardi. It's, oh, I love yarn. Do you guys love yarn? Because I, I really love yarn. I really love yarn. It's, there, there's very little in this world that makes me happier than a big, Mm, body full of yarn to just hug and squeeze so yeah anyway that's all I got I'm gonna sign off record another video and I will see you guys hopefully for another episode next week so thank you guys so much for watching until next time bye bye